Hey, what's up guys? Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. It's Mark the Messenger. We're back on our video. This one's a well-requested video. A lot of people for this past months been telling me to make a video. How could I spend more time with God? So I came up with seven things that I do to spend more time with God. And uh, all, there's obviously more things you could do, but these are just some of the things that I do. So number one is, um, this is the most important thing. That's why I made this number one is you, you want to make sure you're walking in the spirit and not the flesh. Okay, the Bible says that the flesh rages war against the spirit and the spirit rages war against the flesh. So when you're in the spirit, your spirit is going to fight against your flesh. And if you're uh, partaking in the flesh, your flesh is going to fight against your spirit. And God is the spirit. Okay, And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So to be close with God, you have to have some type of spiritual connection. But how can that be possible if you're just living for the flesh and you're living for uh, the pleasures of this world? You know, we want to we want to be lovers of God, God more than lovers of uh, pleasure okay so always keep that in mind guys it's the first thing you want to be doing when it comes to spending more time with god for whatever whatever reason whatever things you're going through or maybe you might be going through something good and you want to give him the praise this is the first thing you want to be doing guys is walking the spirit so you won't fulfill, uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh and you know living a life of repentance okay number two is fasting fasting is very key uh many people in the bible fasted um now one of the main reasons for fasting is it's a form of humbling yourself uh, maybe let's say if you did something wrong or maybe you just want to just do it fast because you want to, you know, get your spirit right. Notice how everything I'm going over, guys, is linked to spirituality, true spirituality, okay? And fasting is a, is a you know, form of it's a spiritual practice, okay? And now, of course, you can fast for other reasons, but when it comes to spending more time with God, this is very key because it helps you stay in the spirit, okay? Um, when you're fasting, your spirit is getting stronger and you, you can't see with the physical eyes, but your spirit is actually becoming more stronger and it's actually being more in tune with the most high, being more in tune with the Holy Spirit. And fasting can give you a lot of answers that you, you know, the questions that you have in life, uh, what I'm doing wrong. Um, you know, any type of questions that you have that's linked to, towards spirituality, okay, the Holy Spirit will let you know. So spending more time, uh, with, in fasting and, you know, walking in the spirit will definitely help you walk with Christ, you walk with God. Number three would be, you know, cutting off all distractions, okay? Cutting off all distractions, let's say um, your friend. Now, when I say cut off all distractions, I don't mean like you got to cut them off forever. It's just a short period of time, okay? Even Jesus Christ told his disciples um, he, he went to the mountaintop alone. So even Moses, you know, did it alone. So sometimes, guys, you're going to have to cut off people for a little bit, okay? Not in a negative way, not in a way like, you know, I'm never going to see you again. Just like, hey, I'm doing my own thing a little bit. Uh, you don't have to tell someone what you're about to do. Um, most people won't understand anyways. So, uh, but yeah, just cut up, cut them off. You know, maybe uh, take some breaks from social media. Um, take some breaks from, you know, anything that you feel is a distraction. Um, your TV, video games, whatever the case may be, just for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or whatever, how long God is leading you to. And that's, it's helped me out a lot because sometimes, guys, when the enemy sees you're getting closer to God, Satan's gonna put up distractions to make you to make you don't you know get that connection with God because you know once you are connected to God you're gonna get more answers. Satan wants you to be confused, okay? The enemy wants you to be confused, so uh, he will use distractions, okay? The people in your life, the things of the world, he will use that to try to you know get you off what God is calling you to do, okay? So remember that, guys. When you cut off all distractions, it's just for a short period of time. In this, and then your the, your real friends, your real people who have love for you, they're going to be okay with that. And the people who are fake, the people who have ill motives, they're going to call you weird. And they have that, that controlling spirit. Because every time I cut off someone for a short period of time for like a distraction, they made it seem like I was just a terrible person. And that person, God ended, me, God ended up allowing me to see with a new time, like that person was never meant to be in my life anyways. Okay, But the friends who I told... And they were like, oh, yeah, it's okay. Hit me up whenever. Like, those are my friends still today. You know, those are your true friends. So your true friends are supposed to be supportive and wanting to see you grow. And even if it comes with you not hanging out with them for a while, they still understand that, hey, you're your own man. You're your own person. And, you know, you want, you got to, you know, you have your own connection, your own relationship with God. Okay, so I want to make that very clear, guys. When you cut off all distractions, it's not forever. Now, of course, some people got to be forever. If God's telling you to cut someone off, then obviously. All right, number four is write down all the sins you struggle with and ask God to give you solutions to overcome, okay? A lot of people always ask me this too, like, you know, Mark, I'm struggling with this, struggling with that. Listen, guys, we all struggle with uh, the flesh. We all, everyone struggles with certain sins. But one thing I came up with solutions, when it comes to problems, guys, on your walk with God, when it comes to problems, you always want to come up with solutions. What can I do to overcome? Like, that's what your mind should be focused on. How can I overcome, okay? 
And now one thing you want to do is acknowledge it. Okay. Like a lot of people guys that have demonic spirits, you have to acknowledge the spirits. You have to acknowledge it. So when it comes to certain sins, you have to acknowledge, okay, I'm struggling with this the most. Okay. I'm struggling with that the most. So you just write it down and you think of ways that you to overcome. Now, are you going to overcome it? Like the next day, the next week, depending on how long you've been in bondage for, depending on how strong the stronghold is, it all depends. Okay. But in due time, you're coming up with solutions and God sees that when God sees his children try to, you know, walk in the spirit to give us, uh, to fight off certain sins, certain addictions. Okay. Certain things that are keeping you in darkness. When God sees his son, his daughter doing that, he's going to give you a, a spiritual strength to do that. Cause he sees that, you know, faith of that works is dead. And you're trying to put in the work through your faith. So always keep that in the back of your mind, guys. Uh, when it's a certain a certain sin that you're struggling with uh, or anything that you're struggling with, right? Just write it down and, you know, ways to overcome, you know, what can, you know, and start to strategize, start to think, okay, like I could do this better. I could do this better. You know, I could cut off this person, you know, you got to come up with certain solutions, okay? So that's number four, guys. Write down the sins you struggle with and ask God to give you solutions to overcome. Number five, guys, before I go to number five, make sure if you haven't already, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Number five is isolation, okay? And when I say isolation, because there's two there's two forms of isolation. There's a good form of isolation and there's a bad form. You don't want to be isolated for an extreme long period of time for like years, okay? I got to make that very clear. I make videos on isolation, but when you're isolated for a long, long period of time, it can be unhealthy. You want to have, even the Bible says, talks about there's... Um, there's a friend, uh, a friend who sits closer than a brother. So it's important to have friends. It's important to have a brotherhood, a brother, sisterhood. That's very important. So when I'm talking about isolation, just like when Jesus and Moses isolated themselves, it was just for a short period of time. It wasn't like for years on out. Okay. Now God might have a high call in your life because the, uh, I believe his name was John. He wrote multiple chapters in the Bible. I think it was three. And he was, he was in prison. He was isolated for years. Okay. So, and that's, he had a high calling in life. So if you have a higher calling in life, it might require longer periods of isolation. Okay. God has to keep you isolated from the world to get you to do the will. Because if, if John was uh, isolated for that time, would he be able to write those three chapters in the Bible? So, you know, he had a God put him in that certain position to, you know, now and see now those, th those three years of isolation, he might've suffered for, he might've suffered for a little bit. But now he gave us all that wisdom. He gave us all that knowledge. He gave us all the revelations, you know? So always understand that, guys. When it comes to isolation, it's for a short period of time because it can't, isolation can be um, a bad way if you're, if you're overdoing it. You want to go out, get some vitamin D, get some sunlight, um, you know, the small stuff like that. So, but when, I, when it all comes to isolation, guys, it's just about spending more time with God, okay? That's one thing when, I, when it comes to isolation with me, that's all what it's about. That's what isolation is about for me. Now, like I said, I, there can be a bad way to uh, isolation when you're isolating yourself from society and you're not spending more time with God. You're not trying to uh, build your spirit. You're not reading your word, uh, you know, stuff like that. Then yes, that is 100% bad. You don't want to fall into that snare. You want to make sure you're getting out, spending time with people. It's not good to be alone forever. Even the Bible says that, you know, it's not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a help me. Okay. Uh, number six. It's you're going to have selfless acts, okay? Or sorry, uh, do, doing selfless acts. So like, let's say, for instance, right? I want to go help someone. Someone's in need. Okay, the Bible says God loves a true for a giver. Okay, so, um, you know, let me go downtown or, you know, let me bless. Let me bless people. That's, that, that's a form of love. You know, God is love. So when you're doing that type of stuff, guys, that's the highest form of, of love, you know, is helping out other people, helping out the homeless people in need. Okay, so that's one way I, I do, you know, and sometimes I, I could give God thanks, you know, give God thanks of um, what he done in my life. So if he could bless me, I could bless others because that's what blessings are for. When God's blessing you, he's putting you in, a, you in a position to bless other people too as well. Okay, number seven is a long session for prayer and meditating on the word. Okay, a long session, okay, hours, you know, it's good to say prayers like, you know, because the Bible says pray without ceasing. So I'm not. Against this, so if you're praying with like a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, nothing wrong with that. But when you want to get, when you guys want to get really tapped into God, you want to really connect it to him, I say go an hour in prayer. You know, I say, you know, meditate for a longer periods of time. Okay. Um, whatever, how long that could be, you know, meditating on the word day and night. If it's a Bible verse or scripture, uh, whatever the case may be, guys, just meditating on it for a short period of time or a long period of time. That's very key. And one thing I noticed about when meditating on the word is that I'm really sharp on the word now. You know, like a lot of people ask me, you know, Mark, how do you remember the Bible? When you meditate every day for years, like eventually you're going to know a lot. Now, I'm not saying I don't know everything, but um, like through those, all those years of studying, like it made it a lot easier. Okay. So these are the seven ways to spend more time with God. Guys, number one is walking the spirit, not the flesh. Number two is fasting. 
Number three is cutting off all distractions. Number four is write down the sins you struggle with and ask God to give you a solution to overcome. And that is faith, faith and works. Okay, the James chapter two, verse 26. Okay, isolation, selfless acts, and a long session for prayer and meditating the word. And, you know, maybe some repentance too as well, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made this far, if you haven't already, make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video on all social media platforms. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out this Instagram right here. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.